as killers. Sloan Gas Glass is live in Long Island at the sheriff's office. Sloan, uh, they're learning Rex Hewerman was actually hiding in plain sight. Right, Elizabeth, it is hard to make sense of all the evidence that you just described and this man who was a father, a husband, who was hiding in plain sight for over a decade. This is someone who neighbors called unassuming, but not today. Today, Rex Hooerman was described as a demon walking among us. The indictment of defendant Rex Andrew Hearman, 59 years of age. Uh, he's been arrested by the Suffolk County uh, Police Department's homicide detectives, and he's been indicted uh, in a grand jury present, uh, presentation by the, the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office. The owner of a New York City-based architecture firm sitting in prison tonight, charged in three murders and suspected in a fourth, all part of a string of killings infamously known as the Gilgo Beach murders. Chris Sherman is a demon that walks among us. Police on Long Island spent the last 13 years trying to figure out if the murders were connected. It all started in 2010 when 24 year old Shannon Gilbert went missing. What investigators uncovered, they didn't see coming 11 sets of human remains, nine women, a man, and a toddler found over the span of two years along a stretch of highway. Most of the victims, young women working in the sex industry. Tonight, Hewerman is charged with the murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. The case went relatively cold for many years. But then, in 2020, a breakthrough. Police found a monogram belt left at a dump site with the letters WH or HM. Since then, the case that was once cold began to move forward at a rapid pace. Last year, Suffolk County establishing a multi-agency task force, including the FBI and New York State Police. They've been on his tail for over a year before the arrest at his Manhattan office last night. Just learned DNA left on pizza crust he threw out in the trash helped connect the dots. And his wife's hair found on three of the victims. Hello, everyone. This is Yelling Jr. Now, apparently, this has been going on since 2010. Um, they actually made a documentary, a film about this in 2013, The Gilgo Murders. And you want to know, when I actually when I did some research with uh, so Brian Enton, the reporter, he had an interview uh, at a news station about this case here when they finally caught the suspect. And they also, too, believe that it's more than one uh, suspect here that was involved in these killings. But, you know, with him, the architect, Rick Herriman, I'm getting to him in a minute, is that, you know, why did the police all of a sudden just find him? Like, how did it go on for this long since 2010? And they said, too, during the interview, it was uh, one of the chief of police, former chief of police, James Burke, uh, who was later fired. And I think he, uh, he ended up, well, he was indicted for like 46 months uh, in prison for something that it was completely um, crazy, right? You know, it also it did to um, him violating a thief's rights. Um, he had like a duffel bag full with like um, sensitive material, uh, how can I say inappropriate sexual material. And uh, he pretty much, you know, he wanted to go into the whole investigation on top of that. And um, he ended up um, pretty much uh, violently arrested him and it was just a bunch of scandals going on with him and also too he covered it up and so he told the fbi hey i don't want you guys to pursue this case and due to with these sex workers and now the thing is uh it's a corrupt system here and that's right one of the reasons why um in long island Salt Fox county you know, they, uh, you know, they just turn it back on the case for a little bit, but then they just re-enter it because, I mean, this was so many victims here, you know, and for no apparent reason, this was a serial killer on the loose. I mean, he was just living a normal life for a very long time. And, uh, no, it just took to a corrupt system to, uh, to be demolished for them to go ahead and like, okay, let's pursue this case. We got the advanced technology. I'm pretty sure they had technology back in 2010. You know, it might not be as advanced as it is now, but... I'm just looking like that is super scary, man. They finally got, they finally called him, and um, like I said, he was an architect, and or whatever. And yeah, man. Um, unfortunately, like I said, New York doesn't have the death penalty, so only way he can be, uh, you know, charged for the you know death penalty and voted for it if the feds, you know, the, the feds are going ahead and take this case here. So we're gonna read a little bit further here. It says investigators map burner phones. I believe he had a lot of burner phones too. After each killing, the cell phone pings from the cell phone towers. Tyranny said they call this area the box. 
and also to led to heroin um, besides the DNA, right, uh, from the pizza box in the trash. They said more than 300 subpoenas and search warrants were issued during the course of officials' investigations. According to Harriman's bail application, he was identified as a suspect through DNA left on a pizza crust thrown out in a Manhattan trash can. His wife's hair was also found on three Gilbert Beach victims. Crazy, man. Airman defense attorney Michael Brown speaking after Friday's court hearing said this evidence is extremely circumstantial in nature and said his client told him, I didn't do this. Harriman was taken to custody at Maseca Pico late Thursday after a renewed investigation that identified him as a suspect in March 2022. Now, detectives linked him to a pickup truck. A witness reported seeing when one victim disappeared more than a decade ago. So the families of victims, Jessica Taylor and Shannon Gilbert, two other women whose remains were found. Wow. And we're happy to see police accomplishing something their attorney, John Ray, said. Let's see what it all leads to, Ray said. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, man. Uh, they said the hunt for a suspect and what's become known as a Long Island serial killer case started more than a year before police released a 911 call made by Gilbert before she vanished in 2010. A 24-year-old sex worker, she vanished after leaving a client's house on foot in the seafront community of Oak Beach, disappearing into the marsh. And talking about the bodies near Giggle Beach, investigators have said several times over the years that it's unlikely one person killed all the victims. I believe that, too. So news of the Herman being taken to custody comes a day after state police respond to report of skeletal remains found in a wooded area off the Southern State Parkway in Islip. It wasn't immediately clear if those remains were linked to the Google Beach case. The mystery attracted national headlines for many years and unsolved killings were the subject of the 2020 Netflix film Lost Girls. All right. That's all we really have. You know, until next time. Uh, until I get any more the updated information, but this is a cold case here, and I didn't know this has been going on for decades. So uh, I'm glad I'm able to get the right person, and you know justice to those families, man. But like, comment, subscribe, share this video. That's all I really have to say. I'm out. Deuces.